Hey everybody, it's Maria from What's the Story with Maria? How's it going? Welcome to uh, episode 35 of our show. We have now been running since July and we're having a ball. So tonight, um, we would, these are my two of my great friends that I've known for a long, long time. Like, well, Anthony and I have known each other over 20 years. And Janine and I, I'm thinking close to that. Yeah. So my guests tonight are, uh, Chris DiPiro has joined us. There he is. Hey, Chris. Okay, so I was just talking about you, Chris, always. So what I'm going to tell you guys about in the top of, right the top of the show is that exactly this. If you're listening on the radio, uh, you're listening through armeddigitalmedia.com with Armed Radio. Uh, and thank you, Joe uh, Rocks, and thank you, Jim Bell. They are our producers, and they take care of all this and get us launched on the radio. So hi, uh, Cindy. Jeffrey Campbell has joined us. So what you're going to hear is that I'm acknowledging people because I'm also Facebook living. So sometimes it sounds a little crazy on the radio, but I just want to say hi to our friends at Facebook. Uh, check in with us. So if you want to, if you're someone that listens on the radio and you want to watch us live, um, my name is Maria Gentile, G-E-N-T-I-L-E, and my Facebook page is open. It's public. So you can come on every week and um, you can watch it live. Also, I save the uh, video and you can watch it anytime you want. So I also tell people, if you want to share this at the, uh, at the beginning of the show, please feel free to share it on your pages or other pages. And that way it's running in a lot of different spots. Okay, so that's my opening. So tonight my guests are Janine Molinari of Molinari Dance. Dance Molinari. Da oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dance Molinari. <laughs> And uh, Anthony Patel, as I call him Tony, but uh, I think you go by Anthony mostly, right? Yeah, Tony. Okay, uh, Anthony, uh, Tony Patelis, and um, he is an actor, a director, a singer, screenwriter. Uh, and so how did I meet these wonderful people? How do I know all these great people? I also just found out that I didn't realize Janine not only has a dance school, but also does a lot, a lot, a lot of choreography, which I didn't know. And uh, I think, Janine, you are our first ever choreographer yes. on What's the Story with Maria. <laughs> so that is a really big deal. So yeah. let me, uh, okay, Janelle Farmer has joined us. Jason Peck has joined us. Susan Barone has joined us. Yeah. Varen. Hi, Susan. Susie. Uh, John Pandish, Billy Rowe. Hi, everybody. Julie uh, Gian Giannazzi has joined us, too. Okay, so many great people. Feel free to share this on your pages as well. So uh, Tony and I, I'm going to start with Tony, Janine. I hope you don't mind. Not at all. <laughs> all right. Tony and I met in 1991 or two. Yeah, 91. And we were like puppies, puppies, puppies. And we both, uh, we auditioned for the show called Tony and Tina's Wedding. You've heard me talk about that a million times. But so many great people I've met through that show. We got hired in the same week. Mm -hmm. So we started off as I think swing was it swing? No, no, no we no, got no, hired no. as the contract. I got contract. Con I got a contract, and I got my we got our equity cards. Well, I had my equity. Card. Oh, you had yours. I did not have mine, so I got my equity card through that show. Come on. What a show off! I <laughs> I already had mine. Here I was so excited that we got it the same week. But yeah. apparently you were a big shot before me. Yeah, so of course. Yeah. So we started working together the, the in ninety one, and uh, and we just could not stop laughing together. So we had a lot of inside jokes during the show. We had a lot of fun things that we did. And um, so Anthony, I, when I first met Anthony, not only was he an actor, but he was also uh, a singer and musician. You were doing a whole polka thing, Anthony, right? Well, yeah. I that, that was a big deal. Tell us about that. Well, I was in a, a band in Los Angeles uh, previous to coming back to New York and, and joining Tony and Tina's wedding. And I was in a, a punk polka band. A punk polka band. That should, sounds like an oxymoron. Well, listen, you know, we we didn't call ourselves that, but the press did. Did and, they? Yeah, they did. Wow. And uh, and I think because of that, then we actually got hired to play David Byrne's wedding. No. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my God. That's so cool. And, at, at, and uh, Timothy Leary, who was uh, somewhat of a hero of mine, yeah. um, conducted the band. Uh, the wow. Wedding. And uh, Spalding Gray was there. It was a great night. But yeah, we had a band and we, we recorded three albums and uh, on ROM records. And uh, that was a big deal back then. Let me yeah. stop you because nobody was making, nobody I knew was making albums or CDs. I mean, since then, you were kind of the first person I knew that had an album that I knew as a person, you know, as a friend. And because I made a couple of CDs 
down the line, you know, like in 98 and then 2003, but, but you were really like someone that did that before anybody else did. So well, you I think had- one of the distinctions that we, we were kind of proud of in the band was that um, we were probably the f- one of the very first, if not the first, um, rock and roll polka or rock and roll accordion band. I <laughs> love it. It wasn't just polka. We did um, a little reggae. We did a little soca. But, but anyway, you were the we, you were the main guy, right? You were the I singer. Was the singer. Yeah. And but we preceded the accordion. We preceded um, Paul Simon on Graceland, which wow. was the first time he came through with accordion. I think in '87. And we had been together since '85 and traveling all around the country. And then in the '90s, accordion started to become really a little blossomed. infused. So yeah. we were pioneers of the of accordion rock. Wow, yeah. I love it. So that's when I first met you. That's what I how I knew you, mm-hmm. what I knew you as. And then as the years progressed, you uh, not only did acting, but then you started directing. When did you start directing? Well, that was that actually also strangely brought of, uh, uh, out of Tony and Tina's wedding because our dear friend, the mutual friend Tim Monaghan. Um, I love Tim Monaghan. I love the best man in the show. I and about that. He had written a show. He had written a theater piece uh, called Lobster Tales. Oh, my God, which I loved because, you know, I'm from New England as well. Right, so you probably saw it. I Tales. saw it several times. Yeah. Actually, it was so wonderful. he asked me to direct it. Um, I had never directed before, and I said no. And he kept... <laughs> He kept asking me and asking me, oh, I know you got a director. So I said, well, I don't, I don't direct. I don't know how to drive. I'm not a director. And he said, no, please, please. you got to do this. So I said, okay, we'll try it out. We started rehearsing and this and that. Well, anyway, long story short, I directed it. We opened it uh, at the West Bank Cafe. And lo and behold, we got picked up and taken to London, England, where we did it at the Barons Court Theater. Amazing. And, yeah, for five weeks, which was wonderful. So I went there and directed uh, Tim... Uh, and then I left him on his own, um, getting all kinds of mischief. I'm I sure. know. I love. Well, Timmy is God mischief knows. is his middle name, right? So that was the beginning of it. And then Nancy Timpanero, who you also I know. love uh, Nancy. Mm-hmm. I love Nancy Timpanero. One of my favorite people, right? Nancy Timpanero, amazing uh, singer and comedian. Then had also written a show called Soti, so, right? Uh, about uh, Tony Fields. Fields. I remember that. And I saw she that show. Asked me if I would direct that, and that was actually we we direct did that directly off Broadway. Okay, let me take a moment because I want to acknowledge we've got a bunch of new people coming on. Johnny Tamaro came on and said two of my favorite people. Oh, Johnny T. Johnny. Yep. <laughs> Juan Felipe has come on and Chris Olaya. Oh, hello, Chris. Hi, how are you, Chris? Uh, Gabrielle uh, Trumbull has come on. Leo Rodriguez. I talked about you, Leo Rodriguez. <laughs> <laughs> He's been on the show. He's hysterical. <laughs> Louis, uh, uh, Louis Goldberg has joined us. Ed Kutu. Hi, Ed Kutu of Blade Salon in Connecticut. So I'm going to, from time to time, I'm going to shout out my friends because they are great people and they come on the show. Some of them have been on the show. So Anthony was telling us about, this is Anthony Patelis and Janine Molinari, if you just joined. See, they're all the smiles and they're happy. They get shouted Yay. out because they deserve it. They come back week after week. So, um... Anthony was telling us about how we first started directing, and that's how it happens. One thing happens up, so you directed um, the Nancy Tipperary show. That was a great and show. And that ran several months off Broadway. Yep. And, uh, and and it just grew from there. And and the interesting part about it was that it became um, very much a second career for me. And and thank God for it because when I wasn't acting, right? Strangely enough, a, a directing job would come along, and I've since then directed all across the country and. And uh, and luckily also in, in London. Oh, oh. So yeah. and we're going to talk about all this because there's so much stuff going on. So we were talking earlier. They got here early. Thank God they're early birds. And we were talking about like part of why I respect these people so much is because we understand. Like I've, we've all been in the business a long time. And the thing is, the things you have to do sometimes to stay afloat, yeah. and you don't realize you may pick something up, just try something new, and then it, as Tony said it turns out to be like a second career and thank God for that. So I want to uh, switch over to Janine. We're going to go back and forth. So Janine, uh, I, I left the show and then you came in, I think right after. So yeah. we didn't really cross paths that way. I got to know you through our mutual friend, Susan Campanero. Yes. 
who is an actress, also very funny, but she's also a dancer. Yes. And I met you when she was taking tap from you, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah. I, um, and I, that's how it started. And yeah. that was a, what, 90? It was 99. Okay. And that's when I joined the show, Tony okay. and we had, The show had already moved uptown. Okay. So I was never part of the village the, group, which I had heard so much about. And then you were, I heard Well, we about. heard a lot about the yes. San Fran. You know, that's yes. how it is, the original. Totally. You're always compared to another cast. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I joined the cast, and Susan was teen at the time. And the whole group of them knew I danced from Tony and Tina's. And they said, you should start a tap class. Oh, and so you hadn't started a tap class? No, yet? I mean, I had always taught through college. Wow, I mean, I always uh, choreographed and taught. But yes, the Tony and Tina people, a whole group of girls said, you need to start a tap class. So I started right around the block from where the show was. Wow. And this is this is how I began. So they all came in. They took the class. Susan has still been with me all these years. I know. And she. I don't think she's going to leave you anytime <laughs> soon. Never, no, no, no. She'll never leave. Susan, come on, Errol. We love Susie. <laughs> we, we love, love her. Susie. We love her. Yeah. But oh, no, we it was because of the Tony and Tina people that I started it. And uh, it was every Saturday morning we would have a class. And then one Saturday morning, Thanksgiving weekend, there was a knock on the door. And we were in the middle, we were beginning of the class. And it was all these little kids with all their parents. No. And they said, can we come and take your class? And I said, I'm sorry, I don't teach kids. And they go, you me. don't understand, we're on Broadway shows. You know, we're in Annie Get Your Gun, we're in Les Mis. And they started rattling all the shows. And I said, mm -hmm. I really don't think you guys can be able to keep up, but you're more than welcome to take class today. Oh my God. Because their teacher didn't show up. And by the way, I think their teacher is now a very famous director on Broadway. Oh, wow. But um, they came in and um, two weeks later, they drove all the adults out and the rest is history. And that's how Dance Molinari came to be. Wow. Yes. And so now, so so, because uh, I have seen a, a lot of your different shows that you've had, and Susie's always will let me know about them. Yes. And you will have the as the little little guys, and, and that included um, Chloe. Yeah. I oh, remember. Yeah. Now oh, it's yeah. crazy that Chloe, <laughs> my daughter, uh, Tony's daughter, who uh, the first yes. time I saw Chloe dance, she was a little yes. peanut. Yes. Right. And now Chloe's married, right? And has a baby. And oh, a baby. wow. Yes. So that's how long you've been teaching dance. Yeah, she started with me when she was 12. Um, but it really. Oh, but you met Chloe when she was five. I yeah. met Chloe five. when she was yes. really so, little, but I remember her dancing yes. really dancing well with Janine. Yes. with Janine. But the whole the whole point of the company was not to be like a dancing school. It literally became this coaching for Broadway kids. Wow. So it's now we have kids in School of Rock and Matilda and every Broadway show, every national tour, Disney shows, Nickelodeon out in L.A. So it was never I, my, it was never my ambition to do recitals and become a, that kind of a school. It was more like working with professional kids. Where That's amazing. There are singers, actors who have to learn to dance. And you know, I teach at a so. school called the Male Performing Arts Center in Morristown. And yeah. a lot of my kids are incredibly talented. I'm going to tell them about them, it. And so I'm going to send yeah, them to you because yeah. they're so talented. Yeah, this is the, the next step to going to Broadway or doing something bigger. So we coach them for all those shows. Wow. Yes. Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. And so both of you have that similar um, kind of starting from like not even realizing, kind of just doing it. And yeah, I'll yeah. do it with some friends and then realizing you're really good at something and it turned into something lucrative. That's right. Vincent Palumbo has joined <gasps> us. Palumbo! Can you believe this? Vinny, Vinny look who I have. <laughs> Look who I have. I have Tony Patellas and Janine Molinari. Oh, my God. Rick Smith has joined us. Fatima. Hi, Fatima <laughs> was my first baseman. Uh, and she knows Susie. We, she, Susie was our catcher. Uh, Susan Campanero and Susie loves Fatima. Everyone knows Susan. Everyone knows Susan. Yes. Six degrees of yes. Susan Campanero. <laughs> So, oh, we have a quick shout out to Vinny Palumbo. Oh, he's Vinny, great. If, I, if you were here, I would give you a shoulder. Oh, what? Whoa, What's happening whoa. here? Is there anything I should know? Yeah. All right. So that's all. That's for you. That's for your <laughs> eyes and ears. Kids, God. Too much info. I know. That's a lot happening. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. That's it. It's too late. Too late. All right. So now you guys have uh, another thing that you do is you have collaborated. Well, since Carla Acrole. Hi, Carla. Happy birthday. Did you have a birthday this week? Or am I just, oh no, you were looking for something, resume. Okay, I'm gonna shout this out. Carla is looking for someone that does resumes. So if you are someone that puts together resumes, uh, Carla is looking for someone to help her with that. So make friends out there. And uh, that's what I like to do, connect people. All right, so you guys have collaborated on many projects now. Many projects. Okay, so talk about some of that and how that goes. Well, I think we've done a lot of acting together. Yeah. Um, right. start beginning, well, beginning with Tony. Well, yeah. Time, but then in 2000, um, we were in a show at La Mama together. 
um, where she played my daughter and I played <laughs> Tevya uh, or Teddy in a show called um, Fiddler Subterrain. Fiddler Subterrain, yes. which uh, has the distinction okay, here we at go. the end of the year that uh, Time Out Magazine um, called it the second to the worst show. No. In the, oh, of the year. What was the wow? Plug, Tony. The really first, good plug what was the worst? No, but the first, the, the worst, worst show was to Susan Stroman. Susan Stroman. Was Susan what? Stroman. Oh, so we felt honored. Very honored to be <laughs> oh a better show than Susan Stroman. You're in good company show. down there, and we felt pretty good. Actually, it was a pretty interesting show. It was pretty good. I think they were just nobody uh, really quite understood it because just, it was uh, a Canadian uptight. theme. Oh my god! But yes, we have collaborated a lot together. Last spring, we co-directed Jesus Christ Superstar at a theater called the Seven Angels Theater. It's an equity theater in Connecticut. Amazing. Where in so, Connecticut? It's in Waterbury, Connecticut. I've actually been the residential choreographer there for the past 12 years. I've wow, been, I've Janine. directed for them and choreographed. Usually they're big musicals, like, like Legally Blonde and Footloose, anything big, you know, will. All right, me. let's take a moment because we want to go back to the Seven Angels Theater yep. and then and Anthony directed a show there as well. All right, Rena Cunali, uh, Bergie, who is my cousin, has joined us. Hello, Rena. We love Rena. She comes out here. Carla was making me laugh. She goes, "My birthday was January twentieth. I am getting old, and I just know that I see things on Facebook, and I'm like, I got to tell that person happy birthday. That was like a month and a half ago. Um, and then um, George Hernandez has joined us. Hi, George. He is down in Kentucky now, but he's a Miami guy. He's one of our Cuban friends, and he's a, a new artist. Talk about. We were talking about doing new things. He's been a psychologist, a doctor of psychology forever, and now he is an artist. It's amazing So how that happens sometimes. Um, okay. Oh, love me a Tevia, said Eddie Kuto, because he was Tevia in our high school production, and I was Golda. Oh. Do you love me? Awesome. Do you love me, Eddie? Do I love you? Do I what? Okay. Um, <laughs> watching from the snow-covered Boston. I know they had so much snow oh, in Boston. Yes. Like, poor awesome. cousins of my dad. Hold Rena, I watch your Facebook to know what the weather is. She posts all these pictures, and today they were broken oh. branches. So, um, all right, so let's go back to the Seven Angels Theater in Waterbury, yep. Connecticut. So you uh, have directed things there, right? I have. I directed Maria Barada's um, uh, vignettes. vignettes of a, an Italian-American And I was one of the producers on that. So. She wow. She produced yes. it, yes. co-produced it. And um, we love Maria yeah, Barada. about five shows there. And actually, one of your guests... Um, viewers tonight, Johnny Tamara, I know recently did one or two shows um, at Seven Angel. Really? And, and how long are these runs usually? Is it like a one day thing? Oh, or no, five no, they're long runs. No. They're, oh, really? They're usually four to six weeks, depending on the on the show. I, I didn't know that. They'll do extensions. And, that's amazing. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. And do you guys stay out there when yeah. you're out there? There is a cast house. There, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. Everyone lives together. It's sort of a reality show. Yeah, that's yes. what else are you going to do? That's the business. <laughs> right, so, hey, know, look, remember Tony theater. and Tina's, we had one dressing room for 30 people. It's sort of like yes, that, only did. you live like that for yes, we six did. So we've, we've all seen each other, like, in our underwear. <laughs> oh, yeah. At least. And so, nobody cared. No. You just did your thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. We used to act so crazy in there. So oh, much crazy. Right. I mean, we that's like uh, hours and hours of funny stories. I think if Equity actually had paid a surprise visit there, we would have been shut down. No, I'm sure we would have. <laughs> not, I'm sure. I'm kidding, I mean, it was completely illegal what was happening there. <laughs> right. Especially we had one dressing room, guys, girls, it didn't matter if you were gay. It's not about being gay straight or what you like or don't like or what you're looking at. It's There was not enough room. And no. we would share. So we'd be like, like we'd have a certain amount of seats to put your makeup on. And then uh, uh, one part of the cast would go and because they would enter, you know, and, and then the second part of the cast would get ready. And then they, and we would just switch over. You couldn't always all be in there at the same time, right. but we would be changing. No, you get your stuff done and then, okay, I'm, I'm next. You but we, boy, in. we had some fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, those were great days. I mean, and they're still great days because we, we got to keep each other as friends That's and we got to support each other and uh, things like that. So, okay, now let's, uh, well, let's for fast forward mm -hmm. to what's happening now. And then we can go back to other things. Cause I, when I do my food section, I got to tell a funny story about Tony, but uh, Peggy <laughs> Bauman has joined us, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, funny stories. Okay. So now what, who, whichever one of you wants to go first, what is like right in your, not your review mirror, what's right in the windshield? What's happening now that you want to tell us about? 
Okay, I'll, I'll, since I'm in the middle of something this week, um, we're in auditions right now for a show that actually Johnny Tamara did a reading of. Okay. So it's called Rock and Roll Redemption, and it is the life story of Dion, and that's going to be done up at 7 Of Dion and the Belmonts. Yeah, exactly, and it's a true story. It's his true story using his music, and uh, we're actually in auditions in New York City right now for that, and callbacks. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think I heard his life story on a, a, a podcast maybe yes. about a year ago now i get it so i don't yes. want to give it away because yes. i i want the show to tell you the story but it was really beautiful and fascinating and painful and it's going to be great oh yeah oh yeah There's what's the name of the show there. it's it's called rock and roll redemption and um when does it run it opens the first week in may and it runs for four weeks okay so. i'm gonna have to get my uncle nikki to join me he lives in boston maybe all my cousins we can meet halfway in Waterbury, Connecticut, and go see this. That music, you know, Dion's music, and it spans his entire life. So the music, you know, he had a big change in music in the middle, of, turned bluesy, and then you right. know, right into the 21st century, his music goes. So it's yeah. just, it's pretty incredible. But he's, he's a really sweet guy. His he journey had, is pretty yeah. intense. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Yeah. And I heard it on this show. He had a whole hour when yeah. he, the, they interviewed him. So I'm so excited that you're doing that. Rock yeah. and Roll Redemption, that's coming up. It's pretty cool. And um, uh, Tony, I want, you have a screen? Play happening yeah. thing happening tell crazy, us about that crazy. well um i'd always wanted to do some writing and i and i was always afraid of it and and thought well who am i to write mm. um so about 10 years ago i started actually writing um kind of a memoir uh with some um novelesque uh did, did you write it in a format it. of a of prose yeah and then like switch it over no, okay. i was going to do it as a book okay. I, I never thought about writing a script and, um, and I knew I wasn't going to write anything for the theater. And then a mutual friend of, uh, of mine and, and a gal who lives in L.A. Um, is a screenplay writer and a uh, writing coach, screenplay writing coach, and also teaches at uh, SVA. Okay. And what's and, SVA stand for for people that are out there? Uh, School of Visual Arts. Okay. So uh, downtown. She, all right. So he gives um, uh, private, um, semi-private, there's seven people involved, workshops. All right. And he just happened to email me. We had met some months earlier and he emailed me and said, is there anything you want to write? And if wow. so, would you like to join the workshop? How cool is and that? And I said, and I, I thought, I thought about it and I was like, you know that book you started 10 years ago that you're on page 15? Mm. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, oh my God. I think that you might want to change that into a screenplay. I think so many people can identify with this. Yeah. Because a lot of us do that kind of thing. We'll start something and then just, and, and let me just say, why do you think that happens? You think it's because we get busy? You think it's because we think we're not important enough? We don't have something to say? Why do you think? I know for me, it, it, was, uh, it was a combination of, of several of those things. But I think more than anything else, I found it to be an extremely difficult and lonely venture. Mm. Um, yeah, writing, right is, writing can be very lonely, and, but I, I and some people love it. Some people go away. Now, did you write, did you end up, so the workshop obviously helped. Oh, yeah. Obviously helped. Yeah, yeah. And so you recommend that kind of thing, right? Oh, yeah. If writers. You're, if you, if, well, if you don't know what you're doing. Right. I think it's a great thing to do. I had no clue how to write a screenplay. And I went in there, and then the first thing I had to do is get online with, you know, the writing program, a screenplay writing program. Wow. Um, and then I started. At, on and they have, certain, they have certain programs now for yes. that, right? Amazing. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote, uh, I wrote the first draft in several months, and there were weeks or months, whatever it was. And then I let it sit for a while and stew. And then uh, I got back to it, and I let a few people read it who gave me some wonderful notes and I marked all those notes down and remembered them and, and then I started on my second draft not that long ago um, a few months ago and um, I finished it I, I finished Amazing. I finished this how many pages is it it's uh, 108 108 well wow, that's perfect kind of a perfect yeah you know, I, I was gonna say 110 is like unless it's an epic you know 110 uh, is perfect so. Arabia. but so the, the PS and the fast forward to Finishing it, sending it back to people who read it, and giving me really, really wonderful uh, feedback on it. Okay. And everyone saying, I really see the movie here. So I took, I ventured out and submitted it to um, uh, the Beverly Hills uh, Film Festival. Wow. Um, coming up in April. And lo and behold, 
uh, I quickly forgot that I sent it to them. And yeah, but that's good. That means you have a lot going right. on. And then about two, three weeks ago, I got uh, a letter from them saying, we have accepted your screenplay as a, an official entry. Wow. The Beverly Hills Film Festival. So I'm going wow. um, to it and going to, you know, schmooze and try to get as much play, um, you know, on the screenplay as possible. And if God is really loving me that month, maybe I'll place, you know, there's a first, second, and third place. Wow. And, um, but even if I don't, for me, that's honestly, a really big the, deal. The shock of even being accepted was, uh, well, especially if, because you come, you came, we're coming from this place of just starting to write Correct. really. So that's, it seems like that's like a pattern in your life, something you don't realize you're good at. And then you, but what you do that's different from other people is that you actually do it. So some people are asked to do stuff and they're like, nah, I don't need, I don't know how to do that. And they just move on and do something else. Mm -hmm. But you actually are willing to start. So when people say just start somewhere, you're, you would be a perfect example of that. Well, I hadn't thought about it that way, but it, well, that's what right. it sounds and like I, to me. And I think that it is true that you have to, you know, the old actor saying you have to jump off the cliff right? yeah. and, and, and trust that you'll land, you know, and feathers and, I think that's what has happened with me in several different things. The, um, uh, the directing, yes, the polka band, which right. I thought was ridiculous when we got going, and um, and now the screenplay. So you, you might be onto something. Yeah, no, that's what I'm hearing. You know, I want to just take a moment. I want to um, also Ted, Ted the plumber, I call him. Ted. Uh, there's Ted has joined us. He's out in New Jersey. If you ever need a good plumber. I'm not joking. Ted is the best. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So Ted, can you please type in the name of your company? You're out in Jersey, so I can. My parents are in Jersey, so I, you know. No, he's the best. This is Ted good. is the best. I, I mean, every time I, I've recommended him. People they always love need a plumber. Ted, you can never have enough plumbers in your life. My cousin Ron Crignali, shout out to plumbers, is a plumber. Um, uh, and Richard Kowick, he's going to be on the show. I'm thinking April 10th, right, Richard? Do I have that right? He is an amazing photographer, and he just came out with a, a great book, New York City book. So, Chris Piero, Tony has helped out so much. Yes. Well, I want to just say, I, I, I really need to shout out to Chris DePiero. Chris is the best Chris, of the Chris best. Chris DePiero, uh gave me an opportunity that was pretty incredible, which was a plum roll in, in, a, in a wonderful movie. Uh,
to Rocco's and we would just, and she would like follow me. Oh my God, you're scaring me. But what I love about Susie was she was all, she would also eat with me. So I would like buy fries at McDonald's and I'd be like, Susie, we have 12 minutes here. And she, she, I'd be like, here, eat the rest of the fries. And she'd like, that is no, it's Susie. She's so cute. She'll do whatever you need her to do. She's like a really good friend, oh, yeah. like in that way. And then she'll snap you out of it when she needs to too. But this is the truth. So then I would, I, when I went back and told Tony, I really, then I realized that I was kind of doing it wrong. But you told me earlier that I was probably eating throughout the day. I, what I started to do, because Tony lost, how much did you lose on that diet? 44 pounds. Right, in three months. Oh, great. Promote the diet. Now everyone's going to be doing it. No, he lost 44. <laughs> and I think I lost like eight pounds in the first week because I actually did it right. And then what happens is you go off the rails. So, well, I did, which is a, a customary for me to go off the rails with anything. And then I just started like extending the hour because I remember thinking, well, it's just an hour and 10 minutes and not the end of the world. And then I think it turned into like I was doing it was crazy. Your hours so, got longer. And, and I actually gained it. <laughs> but sometimes I just crack up thinking about that sometimes because I still think in my head, if I just eat for an hour, it's not the end of the world. But it's what you do in the other 23. So that, I do want to I do want to mention that I didn't have salmon and peas every night. I mean, sometimes I went off the rails. What was off the rails for you? Though? You had a lot of chicken, fried chicken. Oh, but that's not even that bad. And mashed potatoes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but you weren't going to McDonald's. Like a, yeah, no, I was yeah. really bad. But, if yeah, I but that's still good. It, that's delicious. Well, that's just only because there wasn't the McDonald's near the space. Right. Well, we. You know what? Maybe some night I'll make fried chicken. Now you see. Now I'm hungry for fried Great, chicken. After the show, we'll eat. Oh, whatever we want God. for an hour. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, some night we should do that. Just have a show where we're just eating anything we want for an hour. That would be a fun show. I think with Chris that, DePiro, yes. I think he, he's, that's it. He's got to come on that show. What an amazing success story. Now, I want to just take a quick second. Chris DePiro, my friend who I adore, who my doesn't, friend. and your friend and your friend, has his own show on Armed Radio starting. When are you starting? Next week, Chris? Uh, I believe he is starting, he's got his own radio show, which he's been doing pizza time forever. So we love Chris. He's been doing radio yeah. for a while. Now he's going to be on armed radio. So armed radio people, keep your eyes open for Chris, D-E-P-I-E-R-R-O, Chris DePiro, funny, wonderful, beautiful guy. We love him. Um, we love him. All right. So uh, we got about maybe 15 minutes left to our show. So what are the, some of the things that we need to tell people about? That, um, like, okay, New York experience. Janine, what I've gotten from this show so far, if I was watching, is these two people started off doing things that they loved and working really hard at it. Other people who trusted them came to them to ask them to do more things. They said yes, which is the number one rule in improv, right? Yeah. So you're kind of improving your life, which I love. You both said yes to things. And because you said yes and were open, more things came then you had to start building. So now you've kind of added people on. Like you said, Susie teaches improv at Dance Mall and yes, I, and as so does Tony. Yep, yeah, so does Tony. Um, I have multiple teachers. A lot of the teachers are in Broadway shows or they're Broadway choreographers or directors out in LA. They're working on sets, like all the different Disney sets or music video sets. So yes, I have a huge team now. So we call it the Demo Team. But the Demo Team. I do have to plug something that has become Please, a huge anything hit. you want. Tappy hour, adult tappy hour. T a p p y hour, not happy hour. Tappy hour. hour. Please tell us about this. Now this is not for the kids. <laughs> this is for adults. You should get carded at the door. First. Yes, twenty one yeah. and over. It has become a big hit here in New York. We start again next week. I was gonna let it sit a little bit, but everybody's like, no, 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 we have to start again. <laughs> so... <laughs> All the alkies are like, hey. And come the on. secret reason is the secret reason is. There is wine in every class. Oh, or Prosecco. And Marilyn Matteris, who we all know from Tony and Tina's wedding. And uh, Patty and Patty. Comes carting in food to top it off. No. So we have not only do we have wine, but we also have non-alcoholic beverages. Right, right. But we also have food. So we tap for a half hour, and then we go, it's tappy hour. Oh, no. And everybody runs <laughs> off. <laughs> Susan Campanera is the bartender. Oh, my God. It's so it's tappy it's hour. <laughs> So you guys, a lot of loves and oh my! Look at they're yes. loving it. It's so many like happy hour, and everybody <laughs> who was afraid to tap now after they, they they have their little drink or whatever it is, they come back on the dance floor. At first, I thought they would put the glasses down. Oh no! And they tap with the glass. But now I've accepted that they're doing little Sammy Davis and tapping no. with the glass in their hands. Oh and it's my! It's become God. a huge hit. <laughs> Where can we find out about tap hour? Because I yes. know people are going to ask me. So tell me about. Yeah. 
you can go on our website at dancemolinari.com. And, and can you spell that, please, for yes, our radio listeners? D A N C E M O L I N A R I dot com. And that will have all the information. We start again next Tuesday. We usually run every six to eight weeks. And uh, yeah, we're packing. And them so in. it runs, the class runs six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. The next, the next one is for six weeks. And it is for beginners or advanced beginners. But I have to tell you, they're getting really good. So we say reserve. Well, wait a minute now. So they're, they're drinking, they're tapping, they're eating. No one's getting drunk. I want to no, no, but I love this. But wait, what I was going to say is you know, Charles Caselli has joined us. Uh, Leo, I mean, Leo, uh, Joe Savino has joined us. Joe, you would love the show. You got to go back and watch it. Joe Savino is like the big guy. Thank you, Joe, for having us on uh, Arm Radio. Mike DeFrancisco has joined us. Kristen, we are back. You have to listen to, go back and listen to the show because, um, um, her kids are so talented. They're they're out in Morristown, and I've oh. actually taught all three of them. And they, um, you need to meet Janine Molinari for dance for your kids. I'm going to talk to Kristen privately. Come to Super oh, Saturday. Super, super Saturday. Oh, she says Super, super Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Okay, so you're going to go on dancemolinari.com. Yes, yes. We have adult classes too. Like I was just saying, our big hit is the Tappy Hour. Now people are asking for ballet at the bar. Oh my God! Um, wait, crazy. wait. But which is really funny. <laughs> now let me ask you though. There's a recital at the end. <laughs> well. <laughs> Everybody's a little half in the bag. Well, you're, you're eating. Well, see, I, What's happening? I, I, think what, I think the secret of the success is that they come in there. They don't they, care. They don't, right. They I love no, that. No idea, pressure. They have no, no. idea how to tap. No. The only the pressure third, is on your pants. Your third <laughs> glass of wine, they think they're great. Yes, you are Ann Miller. <laughs> Right. So that's really? what I would run. Tappy hour. I might take no the, the, the only pressure is on your pants when you're that's, that's it's right. bursting. That's it, your pants are bursting. It's and we always <laughs> <laughs> it's Susie's up front, she's my assistant. And she calls out all the steps. No. Oh, oh yeah. It's While she's chewing on oh, something. Yeah, she's, you know, yeah. And we uh, Five, be- six, seven. <laughs> I'm just having celery right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. This is hysterical. <laughs> Tappy Hour. Yep, we pick one song and throughout the whole <laughs> You and me. <laughs> Wait, if you're stopping to drink and eat, that's all you can get done is one song. No, but we, it's a big dance number. <laughs> oh, okay. We Emily uh, Judy at the palace in her later years. Oh, yes. okay. okay. You know what? <laughs> I liked it. Did you know that it was Liza's birthday yesterday? Oh, it was? Yes. We used to dance used with to dance Liza. With Liza. No. At Luigi's. Wait, you used to dance with Liza? Mm-hmm. Well, we used to take a dance class with Liza <laughs> Minnelli. Oh, <was> and <laughs> Liza would be in the class. Yes. Really? She never missed the class. It was her birthday yesterday. Huh? And Susie was in the class, her. too, because, you know, Susie just has time for everything. For every, I don't know how she does it, but she appears. It's maybe... She's like a ghost. She yes. appears places and she will make herself like she can available. be two places at once. That's that's her superhero power. She yes. can be at several places. You'd be like, wait, Susie was just wait because she's come from your class yes. and come up and done this show. Oh, I remember she was all done up. We were like, where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Susie was all dolled up. But what's the story with Maria? Uh, yes, well, but, that's did, my tappy hour <laughs> attire. <laughs> yeah, because maybe a tappy has a little mascara around. Yes. It's a, does anybody ever cry? Burst into tears. I think they're just so happy to be there, and the, <laughs> it's a happy tappy it's hour. It's a happy tappy hour, and it's this a little is, bit of tap therapy too. Is you know, it working it out? Your greatest fears. A lot of people always want to tap, that. and they, you know, they're afraid. So then they come in and. You well, know. Susie gave me tap shoes years ago. I might have us. to. Can... I might have to join your class, oh, Janine. You have to join us this year. I'm yes. putting it out there. <clears throat> Everything is flipped for me. Like my whole life is literally changed and turned upside down. In in first, it's scary. Like a lot of things change in, in my routines, which I'm a creature of habit. I was a creature of habit. I am no longer because so much is. But now with the good that's happening, like last night, I kept my mantra in my head because I was kind of getting stressed out at work, and my mantra was. Everything is a blessing. Mm-hmm. Everything is a blessing. Because I was like, why is this happening? Why? I kept telling myself, everything is a blessing. So maybe this is the year that I actually finally take a tap class. You would love it. And go back to that one hour. Yes. That one hour of eating. Maybe what I'll do oh. during tap class is just eat for now. <laughs> I won't tap. I'll, I'll set you up in a little table. Oh, my time. God. That would be amazing. I'll just have my tap shoes on the table. Maybe I'll electronically get them yes. to tap. And I'll just eat everything I want for an hour. That would be amazing. And broadcast live. And broadcast. <laughs> Wait a minute. We might have to broadcast live from, oh, from Tappy Hour. Tappy Hour. Yes. You know, we might have to do that. Next time you come on the show, which you, you mentioned, I didn't even yes. realize, you can bring a little floor piece, right? I and will tap- bring my tap floor. <gasps> All right. Yes. 
So we're going to put together a show of what's the story with Maria, where we actually have dancers, whether you're a beginner or advanced, Janine is going to bring, well, my, you can use my floor. I don't oh, yeah, care. It's, it's a wood floor. A wood floor. Yeah. Bring your tap shoes and we'll talk about different things. And then just like chorus line, but I can teach a couple of steps. Oh my God. Get your really? Then get the glass of wine or whatever. They're not. Yes. No, I don't care. I don't give you guys. Drink. I work in bars. I don't yeah. care. Listen, you just don't want to see me drunk. I'm allergic to alcohol. I break out in handcuffs. It's not good. <laughs> but other people, let them drink, baby. That's how I paid my Tony rent for you. Tony can in the corner for one hour. Tony. And direct, perhaps he can just take it in, write yes. some notes. Because Tony's good. When I think of Tony, I think of this. Don't you? Yes. He does that a lot. He does do that. He, he's yes. the thinker, right? Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. So we're coming. Uh, people are loving this. This is great. Yes. Uh, Kristen, uh, Beth, you have to. Dances with Janine. Oh, she did. Danielle dances with Janine already. With Danielle? Oh, yeah. Danielle, Be uh, Danielle yes. Beth. Oh, my God. Have you ever heard Danielle sing? I, I don't think I've heard her sing. Oh, my God. Danielle no. is one of our top stars oh. out in Mayo. She's, I mean, not just Mayo. She's everywhere. I have no doubt. All the Becks are amazing talented. kids. And then there's Thomas Beck is my, is the little guy. Of course I say my little guy, but he's uh, Kristen's little guy, but he's one of my students. Unbelievable. And of course, um, Bobby Beck. Great. Mm. Amazing kids. Yes. I'm glad you all know each other. So a uh, Mike to Francisco is whoop whooping it up there. I think we fit a nerve with happy hour. Okay. So yes. how do we want, we want to wind, wind down the show. Um, we have about maybe seven minutes. What would you, so, uh, Anthony, what would you tell people that are listening to the show, whether they're in the business, this business that we're in or something else, what, what would you tell them? What would you be your advice? Well, I would, I, my advice would be that if you really want something and you want to do it badly, that you should just do it. Um, and not worry about the, um, the success or the consequences or the failure or anything else, because, um, Many people think that that uh, success grows out of failure, and I mm. I tend to agree with that. As long as you stick with it, you mean not a failure because you learn from your mistakes, right? Correct. Yeah. Um, but I remember starting, you know, many, many, many years ago in this business and moving to New York City from the Midwest. Uh, oh, I didn't know that about you. Yes, ma'am. Where? Um, Where did you grow up? Yeah. I, I can sing it. Please do. Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, Gary, Indiana, let me say it, like, whatever. I so, love it though. <laughs> yeah. I was just there. And you were? No, in my head. I just oh. went there with you. My gosh. Um, <laughs> see, I don't need to drink. <laughs> you see what happens? Well, I, wanted, I was immediately going to say, get out. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if you want to be there right now. So, in, in, in anything. You're in Gary yeah. Crystal. Get, oh, get out of here. Get out of Gary. Good idea for a movie. So, oh my God. Uh, but I remember when I first when I first came to New York and 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 other people kind of showed up from from college or whatever you know uh, that I'd gone to school with and they'd say, well, what if I you know what if I put myself into this and I don't make it? You know, honestly, if you're asking that question. It's not right for you. Right. Um, and because when you were saying that, I, I was just about to say, it's not about making it. Right. You know, you know who told me that we both know Sharon Angela said to me once, uh, it's about the work. That's I never it. forgot that. And it was when I first got in the show and I was, I was obsessed about something. She's like, no, 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 no. It's about the work. Mm -hmm. You should never, like, I think it was about the, whatever it was, a songwriter or something. I had just started to, and that's another thing. I start, I didn't know I was a songwriter. You know who told me I was a songwriter? Lynn Portis. Mm. Lynn because, again. <clears throat> again, somebody, but the school I was teaching at hired uh, my a friend of mine to write music for these shows, and she dropped the ball. She's no longer a friend of mine, but a person that a, a, a mutual friend of ours, and she dropped the ball. But I, we'd already paid her from the budget, and I was terrified to lose my job. So I literally wrote these songs. I said, just sit with me at the piano, just put some chords to it, and. <clears throat> And I'll write, I'll do it. I'll write the melodies. I'll write the lyrics. And that's, and when I sh turned in the songs and they liked the songs at the end of the show, my supervisor said, she didn't write those songs. You did. I know your voice because I was also teaching creative writing at the school. Yeah. So, and then I said to Lynn, Lynn, but I'm not, she, Lynn said, you are a songwriter. And it was Lynn Portis who got me to really be confident about that. But it was an accidental thing. Just like, you know, Tony saying, but both of us didn't say no. I mean, mine was because I was afraid to lose my job. And yours was because you took a risk. 
And Janine just opening that door to those kids. I'm you literally, a, met, metaphorically and literally opened a door I, that day. I did. I opened that door. Oh, who would have known? But, Talk about opportunity knocking. Yeah. I mean, like, really, no pun intended. <laughs> right? I mean. Yeah, about 12 kids. 12 kids. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Okay, so now yeah. uh, let's let's tell people again if they checked in late. If they want to find you, uh, Janine, how do they find you? Yeah, they can go on to the dancemolinari.com, www, obviously, uh, website. And we're in New York, L.A., and Chicago. And we're also, you know, we have people in almost every major city across the country. Wow. Um, but Tappy Hour is right here in New York City oh right now. Oh, my God. Um, but, yes, we start next week. And um, Justine just joined us. Yay. Justine. Hi, Justine. Justine. Michael Barberi joined. Yay. Wow. Okay, so they can find you in all these different – and yes. you can help people. Like, if people are going to a different city, they're on tour, you can help them – find dance teachers as well. Well, yeah. Mo I mean, most of it are people who are part of our team. That's what I mean. They're all professionals and who currently work in the business. And they all have to, they all have to be able to sing and act as well because all these kids are triple threats. Triple threats. They threat. even play instruments. So we even offer improv classes. We offer stomp classes, which is like... No, oh, like, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the brooms and doing all this. No. Of, oh, yeah. See, I'd yes. be good at that. Oh, it's so much fun. Because I'm actually very good with rhythm, and I play the cone, and I play cluster yes, drums, exactly, the like tambourine. Oh, you, you take I the I play place. all I have. Take your dirty dishes. What? Yeah, you can eat. Oh, it. my God. I think I found something new. <laughs> I'm taking that house. class. The stomp class. Stomp I'm actually class. really good with this it's stuff. It's really fun. It's really fun. Fabulous. I, I don't oh teach God. it. Someone else does. It doesn't it. matter. Yes, That's it. It's That's a great it. class. And I, because I, I, one of my friends who was on the show, Yvonne Cassidy, she teaches writing, and I may end up taking her class. She's a writer. She's an Irish writer. And these are all new things that I want to do this year. So I'm putting it out there. And, and you I, should. You just say yes. So and, she, she started a class called Stomping Grapes. Oh, oh yeah. like Lucy. If she did, stomping grapes. Oh, maybe wow. you could come and see I, I'd that. be good at that. Sure. I'd be like, really good. And then they could use that for in and the then, happy hour. And then, oh, my oh, God. Oh, you could Tony, the you see? No. The wine. I, that's why you're the well, director. I'm like, you know. You see why you're the director? <laughs> well. Oh, yeah. See, we've got to something. I'm, I'm telling you, now I'm thinking. Now yes. our, the wheels are spinning. Because I direct Stomping as well. Grape, you know that. So. Ballet yes. at the bar, tappy hour. Yes. And I'm going to be in L.A. in two weeks, by the way. That's what we're saying. There's a total thing here. The yeah. theme is just jump off the cliff. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Do it. All right. Yeah. Uh, so we want to thank our friends. Please come back. I'm here every week. What's the story with Maria is live 9 to 10 p.m. on Tuesday nights. ArmDigitalMedia.com. It runs live. Um, it also goes into podcasts at iHeartRadio and Spreaker. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com. That's a podcast house. iHeartRadio. You just type in what's the story with Maria. And there's this. There's 35 archive shows now. This is episode 35. Jimmy, how much time do we have? 20 seconds. 20 oh. seconds. We want to thank Jim Bell. We want thank to thank you, Jimmy. Joe Savino. And thank you, Janine Molinari. Oh. Anthony Patelis. Thank you, Maria. Oh, my God. It was my pleasure. <laughs> now we're going to go and eat our Dang. salmon. We're going to eat Happy for an tappy. hour. Happy Tappy, everybody. <laughs>